Now moving on to pollution. Now pollution is the introduction of harmful materials into the environment. These harmful materials are called pollutants. Now environmental pollutions. Pollutants are elemental molecules and particles involved in pollutions. Now these pollutants can be primary pollutants that are directly emitted from the source. Secondary pollutants, they are not directly emitted but form when the primary pollutants react. Now quantitative pollutants are those occurring in nature and become pollutants when their concentration crosses a certain threshold. And qualitative pollutants are substances which are not normally present in the environment and are added by human beings and are pollutants by nature. So on the basis of uh, form in which they persist, we have primary pollutants like DDT and plastic and secondary pollutants like peroxyacetyl nitrate, ground level ozone, acidrin, etc. On the basis of existence in nature, we have quantitative pollutants like carbon dioxide and qualitative pollutants like fungicides and DDT. Now on the nature of disposal, we have biodegradable like sewage and non-biodegradable like plastic, glass, DDT, etc. Moving on to air pollution, we have some of the major air pollutants like uh, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, chlorofluorocarbons, ground level ozone, lead, suspended particulate matter, sulfur dioxide, smoke, which is a combination of fog and smoke. Now vehicles and industries are the main source of ground level ozone. Ground level ozone further contributes to photochemical smog when nitrogen oxides from vehicular emissions industries react with volatile organic compounds example from paint, tanks, etc. in presence of sunlight. Now sources of indoor air pollutions are formaldehyde from carpets, particle boards, insulation foams, radon which are gas emitted naturally from soil, volatile organic compounds from perfumes, hairsprays, furniture polish etc. and asbestos and among others. Now Central Pollution Control Board has been executing National Air Quality Monetary program to determine the ambient air quality status and trends and ascertain the compli compliance of national ambient air quality standards. Now national ambient air quality standards include the following, following pollutants. Point to notice that CO2 is not included. So it will include sulfur dioxide, it will include nitrogen dioxide, it will include PM10, PM2.5, ozone and lead. Carbon monoxide is included, arsenic, nickel, benzene, ammonium and benzopyrene is also included. So we have arsenic, nickel and benzopyrene. Lead is also there. Moving on to National Air Quality Index, it has six categories of air quality namely good, satisfactory, moderately polluted, poor, very poor, severe with a distinct color scheme. Now AQI considers the following pollutants. CO2 is again not included that is PM10, PM2.5, NO2, SO2, CO, O3, NH3 and lead. Moving on to National Clean Air Program, it is being implemented by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. It is a pollution control in initiative to cut the concentration of PM10 and PM2.5 by 20 to 30% by 2024. It will have 2017 as the base year and 2019 as the first year. Now NCAP will be implemented in 102 non-attained cities. This is changed. Cities and is not legally binding. Not legally binding. So CPC, CPCB that is Central Pollution Control Board is a statutory body under the Water Act of Water Prevention, of, Prevention and Control of Pollution Act of 1974 which will include uh, execute the program nationwide. Now further, CPCB is also interested with the powers under Air Pollution Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981. So CPCB performs is a statutory body and performs the function under Water Act and Air Act. Water Act is of 1974, Air Act is of 1981. Moving on to some pointers for prelims, Niti Aayog has launched a 15-point action plan called Breathe India for combating air pollution in 10 most polluted cities in India. Now, Niti Aayog and the International Transport Forum of OECD jointly launched the Decarbonizing Transport in Emerging Economies project in India. The ambitious five-year project will help India develop a pathway towards low-carbon transport system. Now, Clean Air India is a collaborative project between Get in the Ring, which is a platform for startups by Government of Netherlands, and Startup India and Indus Forum, which is an online, online matchmaking platform for Indian and Dutch businesses. Uh, now, Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority, it was constituted, so it's a statutory, it is not a statutory body, but it was constituted under Environment Act of 1986. Moving on to 
graded response action plan uh, now it was empowered by supreme court to enforce the graded response action plan graded action response plan specifies action required to control particulate matter emissions from various pollution sources and is being implemented in the delhi ncr region only steps taken to control delhi air pollution delhi became the first city running on bs6 fuels now bharat stage emission standards are based on european norms bs6 fuels contain 10 parts per million sulfur compared to 50 parts per million in bs4 also harm, harmful nitrous emissions nitrous oxide emission that is nox emissions from diesel cars can be brought down by nearly 70% due to the above advantages a direct jump from bs4 to bs6 was made and thus skipping the bs5 norms now delhi is scheduled to run hydrogen cng fuel based fueled buses to curb emission now hcng is a blend of hydrogen and cng the ideal concentration of hydrogen being 18% so 18% is the hydrogen co- concentration now the use of hcng can curb carbon monoxide emissions by 70% moving on to curb stubble pr- burning a significant contributor to air pollution in north india following steps have been taken Tori faction like uh, it's a swedish technology that converts rice stubbles into bio coal is being tested by india so tori faction is for converting the rice stubbles sub- stubbles into bio coal now happy seed machine has been developed by the punjab agricultural university for in situ management of paddy stubbles pusa decomposer is a microbial spray that can cause decomposition of harvested stubble have been developed by the indian agricultural research initiative institute that is iari now csir neri has developed green crackers namely swas which is safe water releaser and star which is safe termite cracker safe minimal aluminium that is safel using potassium nitrate as an oxidant kno3 as an oxidant now system of air quality and weather forecasting and research that is safer is a nation national initiative introduced by ministry of earth sciences it measures the air quality of metropolitan cities by measuring the overall pollution level as well as location specific air quality of the city the system has been indigenously developed by indian institute of tropical metrology pune now taj trapezium zone is defined as an area of 10400 square kilometer around the taj mahal to protect the monument from pollution it is an eco sensitive area covering the three world heritage sites namely taj mahal Agra Fort Fatehpur Sikri it is spread over Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan now lichen serves as a good indicator of air pollution moving on fly ash is produced whenever combustion of solid materials take place it composition include aluminum silicate silicon dioxide and calcium oxide now fly ash has a number of advantages like fly ash bricks are lightweight and have higher strength Fly ash can be used in the reclamation of wasteland filling up abundant mines. Fly ash can increase crop yield. Now, notification on fly ash utilization in 2016 had the following features: mandatory to use fly ash based products in all construction projects, road embankments, and low lying filling works within 300 kilometers of thermal power stations. Now, cost of transportation of fly ash to be borne entirely by thermal power stations up to 100 kilometers and equally shared between the user and thermal power stations for more than 100 kilometers and up to 300 kilometers now mandatory use of fly ash based products in all government schemes like manrega etc target of 100% fly ash utilization by 2017 moving on to water pollution addition of certain substances to water which degrades the quality of water so that it becomes unfit for use is called water pollution now sources of water pollutions are point sources and non point sources now for point sources we have pollutants that are discharged from any identifiable sources and for non point sources pollutants are discharged from various ill defined sources and diffuse sources so one point cannot be assigned examples of point sources would include pipes drains ditch canals tunnels etc for examples of non point sources we have excessive fertilization from agricultural land and residential areas moving on oil spills is one of the most dangerous forms of all water pollutants oil flows on water surfaces and pose the threat of swift spreading fire it also decreases the oxygen level in water oil spills can be cleared with the help of brigoli which is a by product of paper industry 
resembling sawdust now oil zapper and microorganisms are also used to clear oil spills now certain basic concepts bod that is biological oxygen demand and ke chemical oxygen demand now bod represents how much dissolved oxygen is required by bacteria to break down organic matter cod which is chemical oxygen demands rep represents the measure of oxygen equivalent to the requirement of oxidation of total organic matter both biodegradable and non biodegradable present in the water now cod value is always higher than bod value this is something to note now pollutant polluted as well as warm water increases bod and cod values so warm waters and polluted waters would include cod and bod values now disease caused due to polluted waters include itai itai disease which is caused by cadmium contamination minamata disease is caused by mercury contamination ba blue baby syndrome is caused by nitrate poisoning and black foot syndrome disease is caused by exposure to arsenic so arsenic nitrate mercury cadmium have certain well defined diseases that they cause moving on to some pointers for prelims we have the central water commission which released a report titled status of trace and toxic metals in indian rivers 2017 the report highlighted that 42 rivers in india have at least two toxic heavy metals in quantities beyond the permissible li limit now composite water management index was released by niti aayog to assess and improve the performance of states union territories in efficient management of water resources as per the report 600 million people in india face high to extreme water stress in the country now 75% of the households in the country do not have drinking water on their premises 84% of the rural households do not have piped water access per capita annually annual availability of water has decreased 14 out of the 24 states scored below 50% on water management and has been classified as low performers now uranium contamination of ground water has increased due to over exploitation of ground water an excessive use of nitrogenous fertilizers now bureau of indian standards that is bis prescribes drinking water specifications however no such limit has been provided for uranium now arsenic arsenic contamination of ground water has also increased in the states of ganga brahmaputra meghna river basin uttar pradesh bihar jharkhand west bengal and assam now national hydrology project is a central sector scheme launched to store and analyze hydrological hydrometeorological data now national water informatics center <coughs> is a component of national hydrology project jal shakti abhiyan is a time bound campaign for water conservation and water security with a mission mode approach the focus of the campaign is on water stress districts and blocks jal jeevan mission aims at providing functional household tap connections to every rural household by 2024 now fund sharing pattern is 90 to 10 for himalayan states and northeast states and 50 50 for other states and 100% for union territories it follows a community driven approach now moving on to atal bhujal yojana which has been launched by the ministry of jal shakti it is a central sector scheme to improve ground water management through community participation it covers seven states which are the states of uh, gujarat haryana karnataka Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, and Uttar Pradesh. It is being implemented starting in 2020 over a period of five years with 50% support from World Bank. So World Bank is uh, is one of the participants in Atal Bhujal Yojana. Moving on to noise pollution. Noise pollution is generally defined as regular exposure to elevated sounds level, leading to adverse effects in humans and other living organisms. As per World Health Organization. sound levels less than 70 decibels are not damaging to living organisms whereas exposure for more than 8 hours to constant noise beyond 85 decibels may be hazardous now silent zone is an area comprising not less than 100 meters around hospitals education institutes courts courts religious places or any other areas declared by competent authority now radioactive pollution radioactivity is a phenomena of spontaneous emissions of proton which is alpha particles b electrons which are beta particles and gamma rays due to disintegration of atomic nuclei of some elements now natural sources include cosmic rays from space and terrestrial radiation from radio nuclei present in earth's crust such as radium 224 and uranium 238 etc now man made sources include nuclear power plant uranium mining radiation therapy etc 
Moving on to e-waste. E-waste is electronic products that are unwanted, not working, and are nearing at the end of their useful life. Computers, televisions, VCRs, stereos, copiers, and fax machines are everyday electronic products. Now for lead, the source is glass panels used in computer computer monitors, solders in printed circuit boards, etc. For cadmium, we have semiconductor chips, infrared detectors, cathode ray tube. For mercury, we have thermostat sensors, relays, switches, lamps, flat panel displays, and electric and electronic equipments. For hexavalent chromium, uh, it is generally present in PVC, and dioxin is released when PVC is burnt. Moving on to certain prelims. First, e-waste clinic has been set up in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh, as per global e-waste monitor. India ranks fifth among the e-waste producing countries. Moving on to plastic pollution. Plastic is the plastic pollution is the accumulation of plastic objects and particles. Example: plastic bottles, bags, and micro beads in Earth's environment that adversely affects wildlife, wildlife habitat, and humans. Plastics that act as pollutants are categorized into micro, meso, macro debris based on their size. Some of the major sources of plastic pollution are single-use plastic, um, which are disposable plastics that are commonly used for plastic packaging. Include item intended to be used only once before they are thrown away or recycled now microbeads are plastic pieces of fibers which is very small generally measuring less than 1 mm they are present in a variety of products from cosmetics to synthetic clothing to plastic bags and bottles and are carcinogenic in nature now certain pointers for prelims plastic crust is a thin coating on plastic that grows on rocks at sea shores now global steps to counter plastic pollution unep has declared beat plastic pollution as theme for the world environment day of 2018 un environment launched clean seas campaign with the target of ending marine plastic pollution honolulu strategy is a comprehensive and global effort to reduce the ecological human health and economic impact of marine debris Alliance to End Plastic Waste was recently founded as a non-profit organization that includes companies from across the globe from India Reliance Industries is part of this alliance Now Ocean Cleanup is a non-profit organization that is developing advanced technologies to rid the world's ocean of plastics It is directed at cleaning the Great Pacific Garbage Patch which is a zone between Hawaii and California Now blue fla- blue flag beach standards were established by Copenhagen based Foundation for Environment Education in 1985 in France. So blue flag beach standards was established by a Copenhagen based foundation but it was established in France. Now it is an environmental award for beaches and sustainable tourism. Chandrabhaga beach of Odisha was the first in Asia to get blue flag certification now for the societies for integrated coastal management that is sicom established under the aegis of uh, ministry of environment forest and climate change is developing 12 beaches in india for a blue flag certification now sicom is implementing the world bank assisted integrated coastal zone management project that is icz10 Moving on to soil pollution it is a build up of persistent toxic compounds chemical salts radioactive materials or disease causing agents in soil soils that have adverse effect on plant group plants growth human growth and animal health now bioremediation is the use of microorganisms like fungi and bacteria to degrade the environmental contaminants microremediation is a form of bioremediation which uses fungi to decontaminate the area now bioremediation can be in the form of in situ techniques or it can be form of ex situ te- techniques for in situ we have bioventing bio sparaging and bio augmentation for bioventing we have the supply of air and nutrients to contaminated soils to stimulate the growth of indigenous bacteria bio sparaging refers to the injection of air under pressure below the water table bio augmentation refers to microorganisms being imported to the contaminated site Ex situ techniques include land farming, bio piles, and bio reactors. So, land farming is contaminated soil is excavated and spread over a prepared bed, and periodically tilled until the pollutants are degraded. Now, bio piles are hybrid of land farming and composting, and bio reactors are as they are. Now, 
फाइटो रेमिडिएशन इज द यूज ऑफ प्लांट्स टू रिमूव कंटामिनेट्स फ्रॉम सॉइल एंड वाटर ना फाइटो रेमिडिएशन कैन बी फाइटो ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन फाइटो एक्सट्रैक्शन फाइटो स्टेबलाइजेशन फाइटो डिग्रेडेशन एंड राइज ऑफ फिल्टरेशन सो फाइटो ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इज द अपटेक ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड कंटामिनेंट्स फ्रॉम सॉइल बाय प्लांट्स एंड देयर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इनटू लेस टॉक्सिक फॉर्म्स फाइटो एक्सट्रैक्शन इज द प्लांट एक्यूमुलेट्स कंटामिनेंट्स इनटू रूट्स एंड अबव ग्राउंड शूट्स एंड और लीव्स फाइटो स्टेबलाइजेशन इज व्हेन प्लांट्स रिड्यूस द मोबिलिटी एंड मिटिगेशन माइग्रेशन ऑफ कंटामिनेटेड सॉइल फाइटो डिग्रेडेशन इज द ब्रेकडाउन ऑफ कंटामिनेंट्स थ्रू एक्सिस्ट activity existing in rhizosphere rhizofiltration is the uptake of contaminants by plant roots now advantages of bioremediation it is the complete destruction of target pollu it is where complete destruction of target pollutants is possible it is environmental friendly however disadvantages is that bioremediation is limited to those the compounds that are biodegradable and it takes a longer time than other treatment processes some join general pointers now waste minimization circle helps small and medium industry clusters in waste minimizations in the industrial waste this is assisted by world bank with the help of ministry of environment forest and climate change the project is being implemented with the assistance from national productivity council acid rain is the rainfall that has been acidified it is formed when oxides of sulfurs and nitrogen react with moisture in atmosphere impact of acid rain includes microbial species in soil shift from bacteria bound to fungi bound so fungi are they favor acidic environment now it causes leaching of nutrients from soil making it infertile it also leads to discoloration loss of foliar floyer matter prodigious production of lichens and premature senescence that is aging in vegetations now ministry of forest environment forest and climate change has categorized industrial sectors into white green orange and red industries based on the pollution index so ministry of environment and forest and climate change has this categorization of industries so white industries are practically non polluting industries and do not require environment consent no red category of industries shall normally be permitted in ecologically and fragile protected areas so red categories are generally prohibited moving on to environmental issues sand mining in india now sand is a minor mineral defined under the minerals mines and mineral that is development and regulation act of 1957 so it's a minor mineral consequences of sand mining are it can change the course of river pollutants pollution as well as depletion of groundwater tables destruction of habitats of microorganisms saline water ingress into fresh water may happen Now Ministry of Environment Forest and Climate Change has released the enforcement and monitoring guidelines for sand mining of 2020 2020 Now district surveys reports are to be pre- prepared to identify and define mining and no mining zones All districts to prepare a comprehensive mining plan for the district abandoned stream channels to be preferred rather than active channels Now suggested use of technology for checking illegal mining annual audit of each mine leasing to be carried out now state government should develop an online portal for the sale and purchase of sand and riverbed materials state government should constitute a district level task force under the chairmanship of the collector now other issues relates to <coughs> colony collapse disorder which is an abnormal phenomena that occurs when the majority of worker bees in honey bee colony disappear leaving behind a queen plenty of food and a few nurse bees to take care of the remaining immature bees now pesticides like neonicotide neonicotinoids and other factors like global warming metal pollution stress habitat loss malnutrition are responsible for this order now locust attacks have struck parts of rajasthan and gujarat in 2020 2021 causing heavy damage to standing crops locusts are a group of short horned grasshoppers that migrate up to 150 km in a day and migrate rapidly now locusts are voracious feeders eating up to their body weight per day four species of locusts are found in india out of which desert locust is the most destructive pest while there are three breeding seasons winter season winter breeding 
स्प्रिंग ब्रीडिंग एंड समर ब्रीडिंग इंडिया हैज ओनली समर ब्रीडिंग सीजन नाउ अनयूजल वेदर पैटर्न एक्सक्राबेट बाई एक्सक्राबेटेड बाई क्लाइमेट चेंज हैव क्रिएटेड आइडियल कंडीशन फॉर इंसेक्ट नंबर्स टू सर्च न पाम ऑयल फॉर्म्स थर्टी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वेजिटेबल ऑयल प्रोडक्शन इंडोनेशिया एंड मलेशिया कंट्रीब्यूट ऑलमोस्ट एटी सेवन परसेंट ऑफ द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ पाम ऑयल सो इंडोनेशिया एंड मलेशिया आर द बिगेस्ट प्लेयर्स वाइल इंडिया एंड चाइना अकाउंट फॉर थर्टी फोर परसेंट ऑफ द इम्पोर्ट्स नाउ पाम ऑयल प्रोडक्शन लीड्स टू डिफॉरेस्टेशन ऑफ ट्रॉपिकल फॉरेस्ट इन ऑर्डर टू मेक रूम फॉर द प्लांटेशन इन डिस्क्रिमिनेट फॉलिंग ऑफ ट्रीज हैज डिस्ट्रॉइड द हैबिटाट्स ऑफ औरंगोटॉन्स और एंगोटॉन्स लिविंग इन ट्रॉपिकल फॉरेस्ट ऑफ इंडोनेशिया एंड मलेशिया सो औरंगोटॉन्स आर एप्स फाउंड इन इंडोनेशिया एंड मलेशिया सो राउंड टेबल ऑन सस्टेनेबल ऑयल वॉज इस्टेब्लिश इन टू थाउजेंड फोर टू प्रमोट द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ सस्टेनेबल पाम ऑयल नाउ अराउंड फोर्टीन परसेंट ऑफ द पाम ऑयल ग्लोबली इज सर्टिफाइड बाई सो ओनली फोर्टी परसेंट इज सर्टिफाइड बाई राउंड टेबल ऑन सस्टेनेबल ऑयल इन इंडिया नाइट्रोजन इमिशंस ग्रू एट सिक्सटी from 2021 to 2011 and have replaced methane as the second largest greenhouse from indian agriculture so nitrogen emissions are the second largest agriculture soil contributes to over 90 70% of nitrous oxide that is n2o emissions followed by waste water that is 12% and residential commercial activities 6% now india is globally the biggest source of ammonia emissions Cattle are a major source of ammonia. Now, International Nitrogen Initiative is an international program set up in two thousand three under the sponsorship of Scientific Committee on Problems of Environment, that is Scope, and International Geosphere Biosphere Program to optimize nitrogen's beneficial role in sustainable food production. Now, pet coal, also known as bottom of the barrel fuel, is a solid carbon-rich material derived from oil refining. it emits 11% more greenhouse gases than coal recently government has banned the import of pet coke as a fuel now it is only allowed for cement lime kiln and calcium carbide and gasification industries when it is used as feed stock or in manufacturing process on actual users condition that'll be it